All right, so I'm looking at the title of one of Braxton Hunter's latest videos, and it's about the deconversion of John Steingrad of Hawk Nelson. John Steingrad of Hawk Nelson? Say it isn't so, Craig. Say it isn't so. Did they get them all? Have they deconverted everybody, Craig? Yeah, I have no idea who it is either. <laughs> I've never heard of it. Anybody? Does it mean anything to anybody? I mean, somebody mentioned in my DMs, so I assume... It's, I assume it's some pretty well-known Christian band, uh, how they can be well-known, and I've never heard of them, you know. You don't know that much about Christian bands, Greg, well, I guess not. Um, but here's the thing, okay, if you're one of these Christians and you're, you know, getting in despair over all these public deconversions, if it's anything like the last one with those guys from Ear Biscuits, uh, Brett and Link, you know, I watched... Uh, I watched their deconversion video where they talked about how, how they, you know, and I saw the atheist gleefully, like Pine Creek gleefully celebrating, ah, we got a new one. We got some new ones for our squad. I'm like, you guys can have them. <laughs> you guys can have them. Take them. I watched their deconversion video and we don't, we don't need them. <laughs> so I'll watch Braxton's video and I'll do a report on it. But if it's anything like those two, you know, take them. Because <laughs> those two, I watched their deconversion video. Did you watch their deconversion video? Oh my God, ew, 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 ew. It's an hour long, at least. And those two start going, breaking down why they are no longer Christians anymore, deconstructing their spiritual beliefs. And I'm pretty sure I heard it exactly as it was to be heard. And I wish I could teach you all to hear it as I heard it. And I'm almost positive it was 100% what was really going on. And if you heard it the way I heard it, you'd never stop throwing up. You never stop throwing up. If that's what they, if the atheists want them, take them. Why? Because we don't need them. <laughs> we don't need shallow, vainglorious, narcissistic douchebags like that. We honestly don't. <laughs> they weren't helping to begin with. I mean, honestly, we really don't need them. Good riddance, as far as I'm concerned. See ya. Don't, don't, don't. See you guys. <laughs> you know, honestly, I listened to their whole video. And if you hear it correctly, you'll never stop throwing up. Why? Because they're so full of it. They're so fake, and they're so full of it, and they're so full of themselves. That's the part that makes you sick. They're so full of themselves, it's unbelievable. I learned to parse out reality and hear people for what they're actually saying. I know what they think they're saying, and probably what some other people think they're saying, but I'm listening to what they're actually saying. And from, uh, from my vantage point, they were totally nauseating, totally full of themselves, ew, 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 through and through. Now... Keep in mind the way I first heard about them, okay, was Braxton Hunter's channel. I never heard of those guys before. And how they were brought to my attention is he had a video out that was fairly passionate. You know, I kind of got where he was coming from and it kind of hurt me to hear it because I got it. He, he's, he's a father and he's a good guy somewhere in the south, right? He's a good, decent guy and he's got these kids. I get, I'm guessing they were sons, you know, and he's really, really happy because his kids are listening to something and they really like something that he can be 100% behind. It's like a Christian thing that's really good for him and he's like so psyched that his kids actually like and connect to these guys. I get that. I heard that in his voice. I heard that in his presentation. It pained me to hear that. Then I listened to these two shallow douchebags tell the same story. And I got to tell you, point blank, Brax Braxton, I don't know if you're listening to this. I really don't know if you are. You're probably not. But they don't care about your kids at all. They don't care about your family at all. At all. Even a little. That's the part where I really started to get skeeved out by those two. All they care about is their beautiful, wonderful selves. That's all they cared about. Their new beautiful selves with their new cool friends. That's really what happened. It's not a, it's not a, it's not a like, you know, groundbreakingly interesting story. It wouldn't even make the news if we, were, if we weren't hand-wringing over it. What's the story? You know, small town guy makes good. Develops a core audience, has some sort of talent, nurtures his talent, moves out to Hollywood, gets some new soulless friends, starts hanging around with the new soulless vampire friends, and deconverts, and, you know, sells out, basically. That's basically what happens. Sellouts. Bang. Just like that. And I know they want to bend over backwards to make sure that they don't perceive themselves as sellouts, but that's exactly what they are. Sellouts. Plain and simple. Nothing new to see there. Nothing new under the sun. You know, small town, don't really know how the world works, kind of ignorant hillbilly types. Probably started out as good, decent guys. Develop a core audience. Develop a relationship to the audience. That's the part that really bothered me. That's the part why I object to them. 
because they don't care about their core audience at all. Matter of fact, there's Tweedledum and Tweedledumist. The worst one is the bearded guy. I think that's Brett. He's awful. He's just totally, totally nauseous. This is what came out of his mouth, okay? Just, to, just so you understand where I'm coming from. This is out of the mouth of a supposed adult talking about his church people back home. After he's made it, mind you, starts going, I started asking myself, what would I have to believe if I wasn't being forced to believe all the things they say or something like that? I'm like, my God. The words forced to believe came out of his mouth, I promise. Forced to believe. That's not a 15-year-old saying it. That's a grown adult saying that. And seemingly with a clear conscience. How shallow and narcissistic can you possibly be? Nobody forced you to believe anything, Holmes. Nobody forced you to believe anything. You're not 15. And he's not talking about some, like, hardcore group of foaming at the mouth fundamentalists like a Drew when he was 15. First of all, that's out of the mouth of an adult. Seemingly seems to think that that's, that's actually what was going on. That he was being forced to believe stuff. I mean, mind-boggling. Then the other guy. The other guy said the worst thing that they said. The other guy seemed to be a little bit better. Of a, of a better but he's the one who said the worst thing he said. And he goes, you know, it hurts us. Talking to the audience. They deconvert. This is why I really object to them. They're sellouts, Period. What they did isn't all that groundbreakingly important or interesting. You move out to L.A., you start palling around with your new soulless L.A. friends. They start casting doubt and dis aspersions on those people. You're from, you're from you know, Oklahoma, <laughs> Arkansas, Oklahoma. You're from church. You, you have church friends, and they start casting aspersions on those people back home. How can you hang out with people like that? You know, they hate gays. They're so ignorant. And you start wanting to pal around, fit in with your new friends, so you start questioning it all, too. It's not all that unusual. And what the people back home did was get their number. You go, okay, you guys move out to L.A. and you become L.A. You've sold out. Bang. Just like that. Nothing new to see here. Nothing new under the sun. And they start fighting the people back home. This is what the guy said. Hurts us. It really hurts us when you go, oh, that's just them. They've become L.A. now. When you don't work really hard to understand beautiful, wonderful, sensitive us, it hurts us. Ew, 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 ew. <laughs> I swear to God that's what those guys are about. I swear to God that's what those guys are about. Look, I'm not an idiot and I wasn't born yesterday. And selling out is a real temptation and I actually don't necessarily hold it against people. Okay? Katie Hudson, for example. Do you know who Katie Hudson is? That's Katy Perry. Once upon a time, Katy Perry was Katie Hudson. She was... A, you know, a Christian artist. I'm, my wife knows her mom. We've gone to church. My wife used to go to church with her, with her mother, Katy Perry's mom. My wife knows her pretty well, actually. And Katy Perry will talk about her parents. They're committed evangelicals. They're, they're committed Christians. Okay, my wife knows her. Now, Katy Perry moved out to L.A., did some version of what these two, these two Tweedledum and Tweedledumber did. Okay? Why? She moved out to L.A. and sold out to some degree. Why? Because she wanted to sell records. Okay, I get that. That's a real temptation, and I don't necessarily fault anybody for falling to it. You know? That's a real temptation of the real world. You move out to L.A. and she wants to sell records, so she starts compromising her Christian... You know, she starts marketing herself as something other than a Christian, and next thing you know, she's just a general pop star. All right, I get it. It's not the best thing in the world, but she... What, the difference between her and them... First of all, she didn't have a core audience compromised, comprised of Christians that she didn't care about at all. So with her, it's totally fair game. It's fair territory. Second of all, I've seen her on American Idol in those time sets. And she doesn't spit at normal Christians. She doesn't, she, doesn't, she doesn't play head games with them and pretend that she's now too intelligent or, or, or she, she's actually nice to Christians when they come on the show. She'll sing worship songs with them. She'll bond with them a little. She'll be, you know welcoming to them. She's not a Christian anymore, but she doesn't like pretend, oh, you're a Christian? You must be so anti-science and you must hate gays so much. She doesn't play a head game with them. These guys got a head game played with them. Period. That's what happened. They came out to LA, they're two ignorant little hillbilly guys, and they start palling around with their new, cool, important friends. I know how this game works, guys. I live in L.A. <laughs> I swear to God I do. And I've been to those parties where they are trying to fit in now. I promise. When my wife and I first moved out here, we were those people too. 
We used to go to that, those type of parties, record producers and places like that. You know, my wife had pretty, pretty, pretty interesting connections, actually. Pretty real ones. So we palled around with the swell set to a certain degree when we first moved out here. We went to parties where, like, the I'm so-and-so, this and that party. What type of party is that, Craig? Where you go, hey, who are you? Oh, I'm so-and-so, and I'm this and that, you know? <laughs> Mr. The swell set. The guy who thinks he's somebody because, you know, he produced whatever. You know, the Talking Heads last album. And usually it's cool. Usually the connections are actually pretty impressive. Like, you did, <laughs> you know? Some of it was cool. And my wife, you, wife used to drag me to a lot of those type of events. When she dragged me to parties, I'd bristle a little, but, you know, you can actually... Uh, 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 one of the places she used to take me, for example, was the Mondrian Hotel. Pretty sure this place still exists. Um, Mondrian Hotel, she used to take... There was, a, there was a bar on the roof. Now, I'd be... Re you could probably Google it. I'd be really surprised if this place is gone. But it's on uh, Hollywood. It's on Sunset Strip. And it was, a, it was a fancy hotel, and they had a bar on the roof. Now, why I didn't mind that particular place, she, you know, Mick Jagger supposedly hung out there. I never saw Mick Jagger. I'm sure we hung out with celebrities. I don't remember who. I'm sure we palled around, you know, drinking with somebody from some band or another. I don't remember who, though, because it's far back at this point. And I was probably drunk. <laughs> but the reason why I liked that particular place is it was on the roof of the hotel, and it had a pool. Yeah, that's pretty cool. <laughs> that's, that part was cool. It, it was on the roof of the hotel and there was a bar with a pool. Now, that's something you didn't see every day. So that particular place, she could drag me to a lot more readily than some of the other places she wanted to go. But that's the type of places we would go to, you know. We'd hang out with, like, the swell people, the so-and-sos and the this and that. I'm so-and-so. I'm this and that. <laughs> and that particular place I, I would resist less frequently. Why? Because there was a pool on the, on the bar, and I thought that was the coolest thing I'd ever seen in my life. Honestly, that's why I liked it. Because I was like, I can't believe there's a pool <laughs> at the bar. This is the coolest thing I've ever seen in my life. And that's, so that place we went to a bunch of times. But even there, you know, I remember getting really, some of the people used to scare me because they were so, this is, what, this is what Brett and Link don't know, okay, that I know really well. First of all, Brett and Link, if you're, if you are, you're not listening to my videos, but if you're ever listening, Here's, here's a reality check 101. You did sell out to a certain degree. Sorry, hate to burst your bubble. You're not these like, you're not these like great intellectuals who finally started really asking honest questions. That's how you want to present yourself because that's how you want to see yourself. That ain't what happened. You moved to LA, they started t you started hanging out with new people who made you feel uncomfortable about your old, old community. And you started agreeing with them a long time ago. Mm, maybe they're right. And you start feeling uncomfortable about your old associations. That's what happened. You're not asking new challenging questions. That's a doofus lie. And the only reason you think that is because you're too shallow to ask any real intelligent questions. So you make, make a video about these challenging questions that you've laid out for yourself and they were embarrassing to be even coming out of your mouth. They were so shallow and so insipid and so you don't really care about ideas. So stop pretending that you do. Why? Because someday you'll meet people who do care about ideas and they'll make you feel as stupid as that video sounded. But more importantly, stop casting stones at your audience back home for recognizing the paradigm that you are participating in. You moved to L.A. and you sold out. That's what happened. That's 80% of what happened, I promise. And reality check number one. Again, you don't listen, you're probably not going to hear this. But here's what you need to know if you do hear this. I've been to those soulless vampire parties and I know those people really, really well. And they have respect for me. And I can promise you on pain of death, they hate you. Bang. Yeah, they do. They hate you. They hated you from the moment you showed up. And what's more important now, you think they respect you. They have no respect for you at all. They respect you even less now. They still hate you. And now they have no respect for you. And one day you're going to wake up 10 years from now. And you're going to know that I'm telling you the God's honest truth. Because what I'm telling you right now is the God's honest truth. They don't have any respect for you at all. I've been to those soulless vampire parties and I know those people really well. I know so-and-so and, -so and this-and that really well. Only one way to earn that person's respect. What's that, Craig? Stand your ground. Stand your ground. Be true to who you are. Look them in the eye and don't, com don't compromise. That's it. That's the only thing they respect. Why? Because that's the only thing they were incapable of doing. Getting anybody to sell out and compromise is easy. Why? Because they know human beings. Katy, Katy Perry compromised, sold out. I don't fault her for doing that. Why? She's young, hungry. She wanted to sell records. 
There's a reason why people do it. And she doesn't cast aspersions at the people back home when they come on American Idol and they're Christians. She doesn't go, oh, you must be a gay hater and anti-science and I wrestle with the Old Testament in some really shallow way. How can you still, you know? She doesn't play a head game on them. She feels a little bit bad. You don't feel any, any sorrow at all. Nothing in your heart at all. You got someone from, from your actual core audience who's hurt by your behavior. Hurt because you disappointed his kids. And you don't care at all. Why? Because you don't care about anything but your shallow little selves. But your new, beautiful, wonderful selves and your new, beautiful, wonderful, intelligent, sense and friends. And I promise you on pain of death, your new, beautiful, intelligent, wonderful friends hate you. Hate you. And they don't respect you at all. Like I said, the only way to earn those people's respect is to stand your ground, be true to who you are. Why? Because they get everybody to sell out. It's not complicated. People want what they have, especially if you're young and you're ambitious. You want it. You want to build. You want to get the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. That's why you came to L.A. Hello? <laughs> That's why you came to L.A. To get the pot of gold at the end of the rainbow. And they, they know that it's a game. And they know that it's a con. And they know there is no actual pot of gold at the end of the rainbow to get. And you, too, are actual ignorant hillbillies. And that's why you sold out. And that's why you didn't see them coming. But what, 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 what about you two that I really object to is you turn it back on your core audience and you make them responsible. You make them eat it instead of being circumspect and somewhat humble. You double down on shallow narcissism and, put it back and project it all back onto your core audience. You become the enemy of the people who built you. Thanks. Like I said, you guys can have them. I don't want them. Honestly, I don't want them. I don't like them. I don't like them. And if anybody doubts what I'm saying, you think this is too harsh. I was talking about this on Brett Braxton's channel on 16 year olds. Like, you sound too cynical. Do I sound cynical? I don't think so. I live here, guys. Been there, done that. Know those people through and through. I'm not saying they're all bad people, but there's a corrupting influence out there, and that corrupting influence is what won those two's heart. No matter how many fake, fake arguments they pretend to give about the Old Testament. Doesn't even sound halfway convincing coming out of their mouth, never mind some of the people here. Coming out of their mouth, it's a total farce. It's a total farce coming out of your mouth. If you guys think you're actually intelligent and really thinking deeply, think again. Shallow, vainglorious narcissist. You're pretty much J-Lo. You're pretty much J-Lo. You went out to L.A. and became J-Lo. I don't, again, I don't fault J-Lo. J-Lo's fun. I don't fault J-Lo for selling out. That's part of what happens. It's why the Bible tells you to be true to, the, to your core principles, be true to your values. Why? Because the world has corrupting influence. And if anybody doubts me, do you want me to prophesy about these two? You, I would prophesy in their name. You want me to prophesy? And you'll know for a fact I'm telling you the truth. Why? I'm telling you the obvious truth. Who doesn't see this one coming? A year from now, two years from now, one or both of them will file for divorce. Anyone not see that coming? Does anyone doubt that that's really what's going to happen? Again, here's my prophecy. I prophesy in the name of Jesus. A year from now, two years from now, one or both of them will file for divorce. Bang, just like that. Who doesn't see that one coming? All of you know that's coming. And here's what one or both of them was going to say. You know, I really, really loved my wife in some ways. She, she was, you know, we, we grew up together. We went to church together when we were 15, 16 years old. We've been high school sweethearts. But she just wasn't, we, her and I just weren't communicating anymore. Her and I just weren't seeing eye to eye anymore. And she wasn't working hard enough to understand. To understand what, Brad? Beautiful, wonderful, sensitive me. The new, beautiful, wonderful, sensitive me that I've become. This new, intelligent, sensitive human being who cares so much about world issues. Ew, 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 ew. Ew, ew, like I say, you guys can have them. Why? <laughs> because they're shallow, vainglorious narcissists. If you want them, take them. <laughs> we don't need them. We don't need them. Out. Out, you two. Get out. And reality check 101, Brett or Link. Yeah, you're not listening to the video. One day, both of you are going to wake up, you're going to look in the mirror, you're not going to recognize yourself. Your new friends, your new, cool, wonderful, beautiful friends who are so sensitive hate you and they don't respect you. One day you're going to look in that mirror, you're going to hate yourself. Love not the world or that which is in the world. Because all that is in the world, the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, the pride of life. That's the one that you stumbled on. The pride of life is not of the Father, but of the world. 
You are now of the world. And one day you're going to turn around, you're going to look in that mirror, and you will have compromised everything that you ever thought you were. And you won't recognize yourself, and you will hate yourself too. Because that's how it ends. That's how that story ends. That's the anti-fairy tale that you are now a part of. Promise. <laughs> Promise. Who doubts me? Who doubts, the, who doubts the divorce? Am I being too cynical? No. I understand how this, this game works. They're the ones who are cynical. They're the ones who are cynical. Pretending that they care about ideas when they don't. That's cynical. Pretending that they care about core values when they've compromised their core values. That's cynical. It's all about what they are becoming. They want to become why? Because they're ambitious. They've been lured astray by the, by the glitter of the world. It's a common story, but the part that they've innovative on is what I really object to about. Because instead of owning it a little, you get Katy Perry to make an hour-long video about her deconversion or something like that. She'll have some, some remorse in that hour, I promise. I can tell. Some, I, I miss these people. Some people I liked. Some, I wish I could talk to my mother again well. I wish we could relate. Some of what my mother represents, I agree with. You'll hear some remorse, some circumspectness, some I care about truth too. I just wanted to sell records. You'll hear some pain in her. It won't be all shallow rationalization and narcissistic garbage. That's all they gave. That's all they gave, and they have an actual audience, and all they gave in that whole hour, rationalizing, self-centered, vainglorious, narcissistic, vile crap. Again, you learn to listen the way I heard them, you'll never stop throwing up. Pretty sure I heard them exactly as they are. Pretty sure I didn't miss a thing. So, I'll look at this hawk, hawk guy. <laughs> he sounded a little bit too hardcore, Greg. All right, well, I'll bring him back down to earth. I'll listen to this hawk guy, whatever his name is, the hawk. What's he called? The, the, the boring hawk. <laughs> the, the boring hawk from the boring hawk Christian band. I bet you a thousand bucks they're a terrible band. They just sound lame. I mean, they sound lame. John Schneider from the boring hawk bands. That's how I hear it. I'll listen. But I, doubt, I sincerely doubt that I'm going to be like all that stressed out because we lost another vainglorious narcissist. Oh, my God. Poor us. How will the Christian community cope? We'll be just fine. We don't need them. <laughs> I, I haven't listened yet. I'll give them a fair hearing, I promise. But I sincerely doubt that I'm going to be like all that impressed with this guy's integrity because it just doesn't work like that. If you're impressed with the integrity of these people, you're, you're an idiot. <laughs> I swear to God, you're an idiot. Even Pine Creek Doug got it when he was, he was gleefully going over their thing, when, the, when they started going, you know, it hurts us. When you back home think that we just moved to L.A. and became L.A. That's what the little guy literally said. It hurts us when you don't work really hard to understand beautiful, wonderful, sensitive us. Even Pine Creek Dog was a little bit like, that's a little bit rich, guys. <laughs> you did sell out. <laughs> you did move to L.A. and sell out. Even Pine Creek Dog got their number. <laughs> like, come on. You know, I'm on your side and I want you to show how, you know, terrible the gospel is and how fake the gospel is. But even I recognize that you sold out to a certain degree. <laughs> the only people in town who don't recognize that they're shallow, narcissistic sellouts is them. They're the only ones who are not in on the joke. <laughs> the new friends don't think, oh, we're so glad you have so much integrity now to become one of us. And they're sniggering at you behind your back. That's what I'm telling you. Because that's how it works, dude. <laughs> when you have no integrity, people got your number, you don't even know they have it. You guys have no integrity. You're shallow, vainglorious, narcissistic sellouts. You should be ashamed of how you've conducted yourself in the public in the last year. Promise. <laughs> One day you will be ashamed of it. Promise. Why? Because there's no other way to view that. How I'm calling it is how it is. Hallelujah to the Lamb of God. Yeah, it is. Uh-huh. I think I got it right. Anyways, that is all for now, kids. That's all. I'm pretty sure I, I'm pretty sure I got that almost note for note perfect. You know, let's hear, hear your comments. If you, if you want to defend them, go for it. But one day you'll know that I told you the truth about them and I parsed it out almost 100% no for no perfect as it actually is. I'm not cynical, guys. I've been in the real world. I know what it's about. They hate people like Brett and Link. And they want to destroy people like Brett and Link. And the only way to earn the respect of people in out there in soulless vampire land is the only way I said it. Stand your ground, look them in the eye, and don't compromise. That's it. That's the only way to earn their respect. Anything else is you being, you deceiving yourself. And they got your number and they're fooling you. And one day you'll wake up and recognize that. 
Meanwhile, everything you built will probably be gone. I can't imagine how it doesn't end, uh, how that doesn't end poorly for them. I can't imagine. The divorce part's a given. The divorce, the divorce part is a given. But we'll see the rest of it. I can't imagine it goes well for them from this point forward. I really can't. I don't, I don't see how that turns well. Turns out for a happy ending for them. I really don't. You know, the happy ending is to wake up, <laughs> smell the coffee. I'm not saying, this isn't about Christianity versus the world, okay? I'm not saying because of their deconversion. I'm saying because of the compromising of the core values of what they were about and not recognizing it. That doesn't necessarily mean, you know, they don't believe in Jesus anymore. They went a step further than that. A big step further than that. So, I, I will see. Call me skeptical. <laughs> we'll see how it goes for them. Call me skeptical. That's all for now, kids. Mass is ended. Go in peace. Amen.